What's up, prayer warriors? What it do? I ain't gonna be before you long. I'm looking to have me Sunday. Then today we walk me relaxing. Today I did a list of some happy Saturday. But anyway, look. Have you ever had a moment? If you can relate to this, like. Have you just, I had a moment this morning. Um, I was reflecting. God did something for me. And when I woke up this morning, and as my husband went about today, you know, to go out and um, do his lawn service, I was laying there for a second, and I had a moment. Like a reflection moment because God had did something for me. Um, it wasn't about you no know, finances or nothing like that. It was something that He literally done for me. And I was like, God, I can't even find the words. To say how much I appreciate. It's like I just couldn't find the words. I was beginning to reflect on what he had done. I said, God, you did that for me. You know what I'm saying? Because some things happen and we are not exempt. And I just began to reflect. I say, God, I was asking you and praying about certain things. And, you know, I still want him to answer my prayers. I said, but this right here is such a wealthy place, a wealthy thing that you took the time out to do this for me because it's so much going on in the world. And I say, God, how do you find the time to deal with us? How do you just, you know what I'm saying? And I just, I just told God, I said, God, this is a moment I just can't even describe. The, I can't even find the word. I can't describe the word of what I am, like, feeling. Like, I say, God, that was a blessing. Like, you didn't even have to, to do that for me, but you did. And I couldn't find the words. I couldn't find the words to even I say. I told him, I said, I know that you are king of kings. I know that you are lord of lords. I know that you are the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the creator of the universe. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Yahweh, all knowing. I'm not present. He could be everywhere at the same time. But what he did, because I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I didn't know what to expect. That You know what I'm saying? And not that I was expecting nothing bad. But I say, God, you keep proving yourself <laughs> Over and over again, I say, I can't even find the words to describe how I'm feeling. And it took me back to my childhood. I said, Lord, you know how I felt about my childhood. I loved my mom, but the, the upbringing, you know, my mama didn't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to get all off into it. But I said, even as a child, with no college education, being teased and bullied and looked down on, I say, in the midst of all that, you took care of me, me. And you are still taking care of me today at my age. I couldn't even find the words. 
And as I began to look around my home, I say, God, and I know this is just a material thing. I'm not going to take none of this with me. When I leave here, none of this is going with me. Don't know what's going to happen to it when I leave. Or whenever you come and get me, I say, but I'm so blessed. It's a blessing as I look around and I think things over. Jesus, I can't even find the words. Have you ever been in that place? And I said, God, even some of the things I just... When you know just some of the things how this fell off, I say it's like some of the things that I experienced in that period of my isolation, even though I felt it when I went through it. I said, God, you made it like it never even happened. It's like it's like it just didn't matter anymore when i woke up i said the things i used to ponder and think about like lord this lord it's like it never happened i can't i say lord i just can't even describe a word to even understand the way that you love us and the way that you love me me, you, you, you did that for me, and I'm not the one to just like bother God. Like God knows, I love to work, and I worked and hustled all my life. Like, you know what I'm saying? I said, Lord, I don't have a college education. I dropped out of high school, even though I went back to go get my GED. Um. He made sure I got there, even though I went to cosmetology school. Y'all, I'm not a millionaire. And I say, God, even as I was, I couldn't spend all that money at one time anyway. But just to think that I am an heir, whether I have it in my presence or not, I say, I sit here being the most wealthiest woman in the world because you love me from your soul. And I can feel it. I can tell God has literally took care of me all, all my life. He has been a true father to me. He has literally fathered me in the spirit. And when I woke up this morning, I felt it. I literally felt him fathering me. I felt the, the father of him in me. I'm like, Lord God, I just can't explain. I can't even find a word. How you have fathered me in the spirit. I so said, you did that for me. And I just began to look back on how God just took care of me. And that's why I say sometimes we don't have certain things in the natural. But in the spirit, sometimes God just be adding things. Because he want us to, he want us to see, he want us to know it's me, it's him. certain things I say God even though things I'm still like praying for and, and I want to see it naturally physically and spiritually I say but at this moment this is something that as long as I have a memory that I can take with me for the rest of my life how you have fathered me and took care of me I couldn't find the words I still can't find the words. Because I just woke up and said, God, you did that for me. Me, you did that for me. And you didn't have to. You took the time to make sure that I was all right in that type of way. I 
I know he's a mate, but it's 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 beyond amazing. It's beyond you're awesome. It's beyond it's just beyond. I can't even find no words to 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 put it together. I say, God, you and I will let her bed. I just begin to reflect. I just begin to play some things back in my head. I say, God, you have literally took care of me, like literally, y'all. You got to get to know God like that. Because I had asked God, I had said something. I say, God, I ain't going to say what I asked him, but I was just like joking with it, you know. But when I woke up this after I seen yesterday, what happened, you know, after I got, you know, something. And then I just began to reflect on things. Something happened yesterday and it, God took care of me. Not nothing bad, but it was something serious. I say, God, you did that for me, for me. You took the time out to do that for me, Verna. God has really taken care of me. When I say all my life, and he just keep on just, like, wowing me. Like, this morning, I couldn't even find a word. I just couldn't find it. I know he's awesome. I know he's the kid. I just, it's just, I say, God, if I had, like, the, you know, if they did that, like the words say, if I had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough. I say, God, I, cause I just couldn't find the words. I say, I know you all these things, but you took the time out to do that for me. You love me like that. Who would serve a God like that? And then I began to just think how, you know, and I said, no, none of us, us are exempt because so many young people are leaving here. So many young people. So many young people, 8, 16, just young. I say, God, you getting the babies out of here. Because a lot of this stuff that's taking place, them kids can't handle it. And I say, God, why you didn't send this, this, these two kids that passed together? I say, Lord, why you didn't send an angel to, like, pick them up and move them out the way? I say, well, maybe it was a reason that you didn't. You never know what kids are going through behind closed doors. Because every time something happens, people are going to make it seem like it's all good. But you never know what children are suffering. You never know what they're going through, just like in my childhood. I loved my mom because I helped her. When I got able to, I helped her. But I hated what we lived there. I had it was to me. I just hated my child. I hated my childhood. It ain't no way to pretty it up. I hated where we lived. I love my mama. But I just hated where we lived and how we was living. <laughs> Behind a ballroom in a one bedroom apartment. Getting teased and bullied and just Rejected and just a lot of things in my childhood. But God took care of me in my childhood. That's why I work. I didn't work all my life. I work and if I have a hustle, you couldn't tell I wouldn't, you know, I didn't go to college. Because I could, I got, you know, God has blessed me just like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't always tell it. Because I don't have to. Been married for 25, 24 years. Going on 25. 
for me. But that thing this morning, I say, God, you did it again. And you didn't have to. And I say, God, I can't even find the words to describe how I felt. How he just fathered me. And it made it like everything that's this this going on that went on and took place in the beginning of the isolation. Like it don't even matter, like it never happened. But it happened. Like the things of my childhood, it happened. But how God will make your make your past your past. Like you gonna forget about that. Cause when I get through bringing you through, yeah, young little boat could see. When I get through bringing you through, you gonna come out like pure gold. You gonna come out through that refiner's fire. I'm going to bring you out and you ain't going to even look like what you've been through. Y'all used to smoke so much weed. I used to stay getting high. I used to smoke so much weed. I smoked weed for years. I smoked cigarettes for years. I drink for years. I went to the club for years. Fornication. Living in poverty, literally poverty, literally poverty. Yeah, we had a roof over our head, but it was behind a bar room in a one-bedroom apartment. And my mom was on welfare and food stamps, and I fought, and I fought to come out that place. But it wasn't till I got to be in God and I got to doing the things that God said we need to do to begin to break them generational curses off your life. When I tell you God has kept me and fathered me, my lips used to be so black. I used to smoke weed every day. Drink Kavasi on the on the regular. Go to the club. That's what I do. But God and I had did that in over twenty five years, twenty six, twenty seven years, something like that. Cause it was before I met my husband. God just started delivering me when I got in church. And when my mama died, I thought I wasn't gonna make it. God just been keeping me. I say, God, are you yet yeah, did it again? I say, you did that for me. You did that for me. You did it for me. The one thing do you did that for me. And I feel so so wealthy in the spirit realm. That is part of my inheritance from him. Oh, Lord, I thank you for doing it for me. I just thank God. And if he did it for me, he could do it for you. If he did it for me, he could do it Why? Because he is no respecter of persons. God love us so much. When I woke up this morning, I began to think about what he done. And I said, God, you did it again. Yeah, yeah. I say you did it again. Jesus. And I can't even find the words to this trial. How that made me felt. I felt so precious in his sight. I felt so loved. I felt like I was in a place with him that like just... 
Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Have you ever felt God like that? Have you ever been in that place? This place. Oh, Jesus. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Just like I said, I began to look around. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for fathering me. He is my father. And I thank you for taking care of me. Spiritually, physically, and naturally. I felt like I was the richest woman in the world. Which is me and my daddy. Me and my father. He did it again. It ain't got nothing to do with no money. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody. I'm talking about what he did for me. He took the time to make sure that I was all right. Obedience is better than sacrifice.